Hello, my name is Angel and I would like to welcome you to the first video of the series of how to build a game using TypeScript and 3.js. In this first session we will take a look at how to create and organize a base project to create our game. Although this is a basic tutorial, I'm assuming you know some concepts on programming and 3D. That being said, I'll do my best to write easy to understand code. By the end of the series, we should have a game like the one you see now. To create the app, I'm going to use Vite, but by no means you are required to do so. As long as you have a TypeScript environment, you should be able to get the same results. We will now install the required packages and dependencies, which in this case is just going to be 3 and the typing support. Now that everything is installed, I'll start the project and do some cleanup. I'll only leave an empty stylesheet being imported into our main file. The only style required will be for the div that will contain our game. We want this div to take 100% of the browser's width and height. We are going to create a game scene class that will handle our game logic. This is loading resources, updating entities and rendering. Having this class will make it a lot easier to manage the state of the game. We are going to implement the singleton pattern, to ensure only one instance is active at any given time. This also exposes the same object to all the elements in our game. In order to render our game, we need to set up a few 3.js objects. A scene which is a collection of entities and where they are, a camera, which is from where we will observe the scene, and finally a renderer, which is going to be in charge of drawing the scene given a camera. We will set up these objects in the constructor. We only need a few values. The width and height will not only determine the canvas size, but also the camera aspect ratio. We also need to access our target div, which is where we will append the canvas. Notice we are creating the renderer with alpha support and anti-alias. This allows us to have a sharper image and support transparencies. After setting the resolution and size of the renderer, we will append it to the container dev. Here I'm just adding some code to ensure the target div exists. Depending on your setup, you may need to check when to access the instance, for example on the document load callback. Appending the renderer only means the target div will have a child canvas element attached to it. Here is where the game will be drawn. The values we use to create our camera defines a frustum. This is a pyramid-like shape that determines what gets displayed. You can think about this as you being the camera and the game being on a TV screen. The Z axis determines how close or far you are from the TV. The Y and X axis determines your offset from the center of the screen. In this case, we will be looking at the center of the screen but three units away from it. Now that we have the renderer and camera configured, we can render this scene. To do so, we will define the render function. For now, the only thing the render function will do is to tell the browser to call the render method on every animation frame. The renderer will take just two arguments, 
the scene that contains our game elements and their properties, and the camera that is used to generate the picture to be displayed on this frame. It's time to see if we have done so far it's working. On the main file, we will import the game scene and access the render function through the singleton instance. Notice we don't have to create a new object. Although we did everything fine, we cannot see anything. This is because our scene is empty. It's time to create the load function to really test what we have so far. This function will load the assets our game requires, such as models and textures. But for now, we will keep it simple and just load a basic shape and add it to the scene. The shape will be the combination of a geometry object and a material, in this case a box geometry, and a green color basic material. To see this object, we create a mesh combining the geometry and the material. Later, we add this object to the scene. Finally, we just call the load function just before the render loop starts, and if everything was correct, we should see a green box. I would like to take a moment and explain what's going on and how to interpret what we see. The first thing is that the scene is no longer empty. This means the render function is working fine and the cube is within the camera boundaries. The second thing to understand is how the camera and elements work. Our shape has been placed on the center of the scene, which is a default position when we create a mesh. And since the camera has been moved away by three units on the seed axis, we can correctly see the green box. Remember we are seeing the game as it is in front of us. This means the Y axis defines up and down, the X left and right, and Z how close or far elements are from the center of the scene. Although we could finish the first video here, there is just one final thing I would like to address. Notice that if we change the viewport size, the game canvas is not resizing, which can lead to an incorrect rendering of the scene. The fix is very simple. We just subscribe to the resize event of the browser's window, and update the renderer and camera accordingly. The first thing we will do is refresh the width and height properties. After that, we resize the canvas by calling the setSize method on the renderer. Finally, we update the camera's aspect ratio. To apply the change, we call the update projection matrix method. Once the function is ready, we pass it as a reference to the event. Now if the browser window changes its size, not only the canvas will be updated, but we will obtain an accurate render of the scene. I think this is a good point to end the first lesson. My idea is that next lessons will be shorter and cover one concept at a time. If you have questions or suggestions, please leave a comment. And with that said, thanks and until the next lesson.